What is the best book you've ever read? To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I read it every couple of years and it's just as amazing. As a young woman, Harper Lee had befriended a successful composer and his wife while working a day job and writing at night. Christmas of 1956, they gave Harper Lee a great present. A year's worth of wages with a note that reads you have one year off from your job to write whatever you please. Merry Christmas. Quat. What she wrote became her classic novel. They also put her in touch with a literary agent. I hope to be rich enough one day to do this for someone. The Things They Carried, by Tim O'Brien. I had just lived abroad for a couple of years in a highly regimented experience that kept me at some distance from the local population. There were a lot of similarities that I appreciated, and a lot of difference due to his experience being military in nature. But a lot of his thoughts regarding home nailed how I felt, and the idea of real truth getting in the way of story truth feels especially poignant in today's society. American Gods by Neil Gaiman. The first time I read it I had to keep stopping and rereading the last paragraph whilst my mind made sense of what I just read. I read so much fantasy that is just regurgitations of the same tropes that I don't need to think about it, I understand the concept, I've seen it all before. American Gods felt different and new. I reread it at least once a year for the last 10 years or so and now the characters feel like old friends but I still enjoy it every time. Dear Redditors, what is a common belief that just simply isn't true? That Republicans are fiscally responsible and Democrats are tax and spend. Quat. Blatantly false, provable by decades of statistics showing that the U.S. deficit enormously increases when Republicans are in control, and is reduced when Democrats are. Republicans tax cuts on the wealthy and corporations, coupled with hawkish tendencies slash wars and funneling profits to the defense industry and oil companies is very, very expensive. It turns out that investing in fairer tax codes and wages, infrastructure, education, and human health is fiscally responsible. Trickle-down economics is a cruel hoax and fuck you, Milton Friedman. I don't trust people that my dog doesn't like. Quat. Dogs can't magically read into people's hearts and determine if they are good or evil. Dogs are often uncomfortable with specifics of a person like their hat, height, etc. because they struggle to abstract. Judging people because your dog doesn't vibe with them is not a good heuristic to use. I hear this all the time during training, and if the person presents I demonstrate why it's wrong during training. You shouldn't move baby birds back into their nests if they've fallen or otherwise wandered away because the mother will smell that they've been touched and reject them. Quat. Why do people think this? My parents told me this when I was really small and even for a while as an adult I believed it. Then, one day I'm reading this article about common animal myths and bam. That overweight people are filthy and unhygienic. I admit I am an overweight person and I will admit this in any conversation but I hate it when people think I'm not clean when I am. Also, I know I'm big easily because I comfort eat but people don't understand exactly the reasons why I'm overweight and I absolutely acknowledge my reasons why I'm this way but I just wish people wouldn't judge so easily as they do. At what point in a relationship do you ask slash consider the girl you are dating to be your girlfriend? It's just a label. Your English teacher won't give you a mark either way. For me it's after 6 hours of total and a meal. At least a sandwich but it could be something more involved like spaghetti. Lasagna means we're married and soup doesn't count. If you're on the NGT, exclusivity and GT, official BF slash GF relationship track, I think it's usually a couple weeks after the exclusivity conversation. You basically say hey no pressure but I want to focus on us and see how it goes and then if it goes well for some meaningful period of time, you agree to just be in a full relationship. It's a good idea to have a conversation about this so everyone is on the same page and you can be sure you're both equally enthusiastic about each other. I'd let her bring this up first, though if you're going nuts and have to have clarity, you can do it. It sounds like you are already sort of doing everything right given you've both expressed to each other a desire to be exclusive. Allow the conversations to happen organically when it feels right for the what are we both looking for stuff. I would say she's your girlfriend when you are meeting each other's friends and family. Two things, have you dated anyone else since your divorce, and how long ago was it and, have you figured out your part in your divorce and are making steps to correct it? Yes, she's into you. Just ask her, I mean, talking to your, perspective, partner is one way to know if you can communicate well through uncertainty. You have the makings of a relationship personally, just make sure that you're ready to be in one and confirm with her if she is interested in being official so you're on the same page. I feel being questioning rather than affirming to prove better in these cases. X, are we in a relationship? Equals affirming would you like to be in a relationship? Equals questioning. It seems you have already discussed exclusivity, i.e. not dating other people. So how is she not your girlfriend yet? What else needs to be formalized? If someone I had slept with, texted daily, and had agreed with to be exclusive asked me to be their boyfriend I would be quite confused. Am I not already? but that's me. You should discuss this with her, instead of us. And amp, hashtag x200b, as for the actual question, when would I personally consider asking a girl to be my girlfriend? Long before the happened. Who is your favorite artist and why? Elliot Smith, I think he resembles a rare group of people who were able to practice their art but also acknowledge the realities of being a songwriter and having to entertain a crowd. He adds a dose of reality to society that tends to glamorize fame, art, and entertainment. I like how in an interview stating that you don't really have to make it to practice your art. I have his picture book and I also love how at the end of the book is a photograph of a letter congratulating him for paying off his student loans. Materialism and money can be very evil and toxic to the spiritual well-being of people. Music-wise, the Beatles. I grew up listening to their songs and as I've gotten older, the lyrics have such depth and meaning that has gotten me through different stages, events in my life. Their music will always hold a special place in my heart, especially Penny Lane as it was my mum's favorite of their songs. She passed away four years ago, so every time I hear this song, I think of beautiful memories with her. If anybody in the UK is a Beatles fan, I'd highly recommend seeing the bootleg Beatles tribute band, they are absolutely phenomenal. What is your favorite opening line in a song? 
From the depths of, in silence cast their spells, explosive violence Russian nighttime flight perfected flawless vision, undetected. Well I don't mind stealing bread from the mouths of decadence but I can't feed on the powerless when my cup's already overfilled. Pistol shots ring out in a barroom night, enter Patty Valentine from the upper hall, she sees a bartender in a pool of blood, cries out my, they've killed them all exclamation mark and quad. You gotta keep them separated, that line does not relate to segregation song has come out and play by the offspring. Ha ha, well now, we call this the act of mating, but there are several other very important differences, between human beings and animals that you should know about dot 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 and quad. Probably Patti Smith's opening line to the album Horses. Jesus died for somebody's sins but not mine it sets the entire album up for the punk poetry she does so well. I want a nasty little Jewish princess, with long phony nails and a hairdo that rinses always love Zappa's passionate disregard for censorship. Surf's Upa diamond necklace played the, hand in hand some drummed along, oh to a handsome man and baton. Do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once puts you perfectly in the head of this anxious paranoid kid having a breakdown. Wise men say that rushing is violence and so is your silence when it's rooted in compliance so stand firm in loving defiance. The cultural alliance bring voice to the fire, in quotations is questionable but fits so it sticks in quote. The world is a vampire, sent to drain bullet with butterfly wings by the smashing pumpkins, a masterpiece of a song.